How's everybody doing? doing There's Bob now. Ray. I don't know if y'all hear me or not, and I'm pretty sure you can't see me because I'm height challenged, but my name is Gina Bivens, and I serve as Mayor Pro Tem for the City of Fort Worth, and I represent this area, which is District 5. And for those of you who are not involved, District 5 is bigger than the City of Tyler, we have, a, yeah, we, yeah, we're huge. We have 109,000 people in District 5. This event has been a long time coming, and I have a few partners in crime who I want to recognize right away for making this happen. I'd like for William Johnson and his team from TPW to just wave to the crowd. That's William. Now, here's why you want to know William. Now, don't break nothing over here. Here's why you want to know who William is. His people are the ones who fix the potholes, the street lights, all that kind of stuff. He's going to do a cruise before he leaves the district. And he's very diligent about taking care of things you report. I'd like for all the brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha to wave at the crowd. That is the first African-American fraternity. Uh, no, no shade to the Sigmas and our, everybody else here. Where are any cues in the house? There's always, there's always, there's always one. John Barnett guy, okay, okay. Well, let me tell you, this is, going to be, this is going to be a very brief program because the whole idea is about recognizing the contributions of my mentor and many people's mentors, Reby Carey. I wanted to bring some personal notes Reby would always send to me during each campaign, but I wouldn't do it. Because if, 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 if I lost one, we'd see fistfights going on. Reby was very strategic in everything he did, including taking down the rebel flag at what is now known as UT Arlington. And oh yeah, that, that was worth it. He would not stand for that. And I found out from Gwen, he was also the first professor at TCC of color. So there's a lot of history to Reby. Uh, Reby wrote about 20 so books. At one point, his daughter Faith told him, if you write another book, I'm going to have you committed. But then the Coast Guard came calling. And the Coast Guard said, Professor Curry, we need you to write another book. And so he did. And so with that, I'm going to step aside and ask for the man from AFIA to come. Uh, my program calls for Blake to speak. Blake will be followed by Michael Morris, who has a very intimate relationship with Reby and the history of all the improvements you see on Rosedale all the way past 35. This is the man who gets the checks for us to do these big major projects, and Reby was very special to him. After Michael, you will hear from the daughter herself, Faith Carrie Ellis. And before we leave, I'd like for all the Bunch Ellington kids to huddle for a group picture. I know you all will appreciate that. And if, you don't, if you're not a Bunch Ellington kid, if you're anywhere near that, that nucleus of this neighborhood, we want to get a photo of you guys to support your art here, which is your history. And so now please welcome Blake Mormon while I take a selfie on my way down. Good morning. We're going to do the Negro National Anthem. Bear with me. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the roll. Ling sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the faith that the past has brought us. Facing the rising sun, a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Thank you.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am uh, Brother Blake Mormon, a past president and proud member of the Fort Worth Beta Tau Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Thank you for your presence and this honor to share with you the Alpha Phi Alpha history of Brother Reeve Carey. In 1947, Brother Carey was the first member initiated into Alpha Phi Alpha through Beta Tau Lambda chapter. Mentored by his close friend, Brother Joe R. Pinkert, Brother Carey was quick to heed the call of service and love for all mankind, immediately serving as associate editor of the Sphinx magazine. His first article appeared in Alpha Phi Alpha's national publication in the May 1947 issue. An educator by profession, Brother Carey worked to mentor young men in the community and assist people of color to qualify to vote, as voting uh, was not a right for all people at that time. To this end, structured programs aimed at curbing juvenile delinquency through organized, structured activities and a neighborhood bicycle patrol was established. Per the fraternity's history book, this program was adap adopted by Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity's national organization and included in the go to high school, go to college curriculum. Brother Carey continuously served in various offices throughout the years, including chapter president of Beta Tau Lambda in 1964. During his tenure as chapter president, the Texas Council of Alpha Chapters was formed, which organized all the college and alumni chapters um, in the state of Texas. Under Brother Carey's leadership as the third district director of TCAC, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated established chapters at many predominantly white institutions in the North Texas area, including East Texas State University, now Texas A&M University at Commerce, the University of Texas at Arlington, North Texas State University, now University of North Texas, and Texas Christian University. He was also instrumental in the establishment of chapters at Jarvis Christian College, Midwestern State University, and Tarleton State University. Because of his work, many of the members here today, including myself, have the privilege to be members of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, as we were initiated through one of those chapters. Brother Carey made Alpha a family affair. His wife was a primary partner with the Alphabets, which was the social group made up of wives of fraternity members. They served as hostesses, and did much of the cooking and decorating for, for, for fraternity events. Even his daughter Faith was on the scene at various conventions and social events. Faith, Faith's uh, photo was featured in the February 1965 issue of the Sphinx magazine. When Brother Carey transitioned from education and business to politics, his Beta Tau Lambda chapter brothers were behind him and by his side. When he began to write and publish books, he knew he could count on the chapter to support his efforts as the chapter provided sponsorships at a number of his book signings. In 2014, Brother Carey was voted into the Texas Council of Alpha Chapters Hall of Fame and was presented with his signature sweater and plaque and a roast held here in Fort Worth in his honor by then Texas Council of Alpha Chapters District Director Terrence G. Robinson. In 2015, Brother Carey was recognized by Beta Tau Lambda as a legendary cornerstone of the chapter during our 75th anniversary celebration. He was one of the seven honorees at our Senior Brothers on Whose Shoulders We Stand program. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated's general president, Brother Mark Tillman, was on hand to present the award to Brother Carey. On his transition to Omega chapter, Brother Beta Tau Lambda chapter members were honored to stand as his, as his honor guard and led the Alpha Phi Alpha's Omega service. We truly know upon whose shoulders we stand, and we know that our foundation is unshakable. Thanks to Brother Reby Carey. We thank his family and the organizers of today's event for including us today. Thank you. Well, good morning to all of you. My name is Michael Morris. I am the Transportation Director at the North Central Texas Council of Governments. 
Mayor Pro Tem, it's an honor that you asked me to uh, be here today. I had the pleasure um, of working uh, with the former state representative, Mr. Kerry, uh, when he knocked on my door and said, well, you know, that 303 in Arlington looks pretty good, and we don't have anything like that on the west side of uh, A20. Uh, they have six lanes, I want six lanes. How fast can we go to construction? Well, Mr. Kerry, you know, the good news is uh, I'll get you federal funds, create a partnership with Tarrant County, City of Fort Worth, and the Texas Department of Transportation, but we just don't do these things overnight, and we also need to talk to the people so the people can decide what they want their Rosedale project to look like. Well, that's all well and good. When are you going to start construction, and when am I going to get my six lanes? <laughs> so... Uh, Representative Lewis at the time created a committee. Um, I think we must have had 15 or 20 meetings to try to get consensus. The consensus uh, came pretty quick except for Mr. Kerry. Uh, working with Mr. Kerry is a full contact sport. Uh, I want to hear from uh, his daughter to see if she agrees growing up with Papa. Um, maybe it was a complicated uh, conversation. It certainly was for me. Uh, in, in my time with him. We probably uh, got consensus in a couple of years, uh, but in Mr. Kerry's years, it felt like dog years. It was felt like, like it was 14 years when it was only like two years. Rosedale Project you see today, it's a bottom-up grassroots uh, consensus of the community. Four lanes were required to save all the trees at Texas Wesleyan. We went in and purchased the buildings on the south side of Texas Wesleyan to create economic development. I think it spurred Texas Wesleyan to redo their campus. Um, we are here for the long term. The commitment to Rosedale and to Mr. Carey is not just a transportation project, but it's an economic development project for Rosedale. So it's the first time in our history that we built a transportation project not for transportation purposes, but for economic development purposes. And that was the commitment we made to the former representative uh, I think he was ecstatic uh, with the outcome, uh, a terrific person, uh, made me a better uh, person. I can't claim him as a mentor because I don't think he had all that love for me every day. <laughs> but he made me a much better professional, uh, kept me on my game as we uh, built, which, which I think is one of the coolest thoroughfare street projects in the region. We are now taking that concept, rinse and repeat, we're now taking it to Lancaster. So we're in partnership with Fort Worth. We've already put $50 million into Lancaster in the bank. Uh, we have an application in Washington, D.C. for $100 million. We want to uh, bring the first fully designed safe street to the region, uh, get our transit vehicles uh, moving faster, maybe smaller, at the curb, create economic development with private sector businesses creating mini transit stations uh, along the corridor uh, and rebuilding Lancaster in the spirit of Reby Carey that he brought to Rosedale. The final thing I want to leave with you is uh, both on Rosedale and on Lancaster, we are making claim that equal access to the internet is actually a right and a transportation mode. So we have uh, taken a policy of our board, the Regional Transportation Council. We are first to claim that transportation revenues not, not only can go to thoroughfare streets and to freeways and to transit systems and to safety projects and to traffic signals, but they can fund equal access to broadband for all of our citizens. So in the spirit of Mr. Carey, uh, what the, what the mayor pro tem is doing to recognize his commitment on, on Rosedale, I think, is critical. Uh, I'm glad this is happening. I appreciate everything Fort Worth is doing to, to, um, to do that. And when you see those signs go up on Rosedale, I think you, you need to remember the spirit and commitment he had, not just for Rosedale, but for all of you and all of the community to make us all better. Thank you very much for having me today. Good morning, Fort Worth. I have this wonderful speech, but I'm going to deviate because I have a 14-year apology to make to someone. Michael, I owe you a deep apology. 
You see, in 2006, I had the opportunity to work for Congressman Burgess, and I sat in a room with Michael Morris and then Councilman Donovan Wheatfall and some other City of Fort Worth officials, and we began to redesign the speedway that my father had really wanted um, to put green spaces in. And I have a confession. You asked me in that meeting, does your father approve of this? No, he didn't. At the time, he really didn't. In fact, after that meeting, I rushed up that street to talk to my father. And I said, look, what you wanted is just not going to work right now. And he was like, no, 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 that's what we want. That's what we need. And we debated for about 10, 15 minutes. And then he finally said, well, baby, is that what you want? I said, yes, daddy, that's what I want. He said, well, it looks good to me. So I apologize. <laughs> On behalf of myself, my children, and my grandchildren, I'd like to thank Mayor Pro Tem Gina Bivens and the entire City of Fort Worth staff for this honor and this acknowledgement of my father's contribution to the city and to his beloved community. You know, it's really fitting today that we are we're here at this memorial. This memorial is called the Ancestors. And our ancestors that are remembered at this place are not necessarily ancestors by blood, but they are the ancestors of our heart. There are young people here today whose shoulders, we are standing on the shoulders of these great people. Um, the Bunch Ellington kids, we just grew up with these people. We just knew them as Mr. Such and Such or Mrs. Such and Such. We didn't know that they were history in the making. You know, my father taught me from the time I was a little girl the importance of knowing who you are and where you come from. Those early lessons began at the shores of West Africa, Cameroon to be specific, and it landed in Fort Worth, Texas. I learned of men and women who contributed to the upliftment of an entire race and were released from that first stage of physical bond. His lessons then turned and focused on civil rights and equality for me. I remember the letters from a Birmingham jail was discreetly placed on my bed when I returned home from school one day. Just something for light reading. The lessons at my kitchen table began at six years old. Those lessons turned into real life action as I, as I watched my father become involved in the betterment of his community. It was a journey of justice and equality. And it's one that would take him from the comfort of our little home on Bunch Drive, across campuses of Tarrant County, to late into the night school board meetings, and eventually to the hallowed halls of the state legislature. And I watched and I recorded each of those moments, not knowing that I was observing history in action. Through my father, I loved to, I loved, learned to love black and gold and all things Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I came to understand through my father's life the deep meaning of there goes an alpha man. I saw his abiding faith in his God, heard his praises as he sung deep, deep with his treble voice, lift every voice and sing. And every day I had the opportunity to see love in action as my father took up yet another fight for equality and justice in his community. You know, at 98, he really wasn't ready to give up the fight. And so he instilled in me, in his grandchildren, in his great-grandchildren, the charge to continue his legacy of community service. Now traditionally, at this point, my father would end his speech with some certain stanzas from Lift Every Voice and Sing. But today I'd like to focus on some different stanzas that I think are more appropriate now since he has become an ancestor. We have come over a way that with tears have been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered, out from a gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. 
in the honor of the legacy of Reby Carey, I implore you to continue to shine your light for this community. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna take the risk of recognizing some people and hopefully I won't leave anybody out, but I just saw Richard Zavala, who is our parks director. Hi Richard, thank you for the beautification. In addition to singing, Vince also gave us the decor co connection. Uh, Vince, what's her name? Who did the balloons? Maisha. Is Maisha around? Well, if you want to, there you, I didn't know that. And if, if you guys want an event that will send a signal, that's your lady, okay? Now, I also, there, there's a red house, a redhead in this house somewhere. Redhead in the house. Where's Elizabeth Beck? Okay, there you are. Did Chris make it? Okay, okay. Councilwoman Elizabeth Beck is my partner in crime of all things that cause trouble. But it's good trouble if you know what that means. Uh, we have Trustee Gwen Morrison who's been representing us for more than four decades on the Tarrant County College Board. Thank you for being here. And if, oh, the former Mayor Pro Tem, Bert Williams, hey Bert, wave around. And the president of this association, Tarchi White. Michelle, you ain't gotta be discreet. I see you trying to tell me something. What am I supposed to do? Councilmember Randy took care of that. Jared, you did you, you gonna come to East Fort Worth. Dr. Williams, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And so with that, what's going to happen? Oh, I gotta tell you this about Reby. Reby did not want me to reopen Bunch Park, but Bunch Park had been sold or given to the school district to help us with desegregation. And I knew that the schools were desegregated, so I told Richard Zavala, get me my park back. And so we got the park back. Reby didn't want it open because they were gonna be dealing drugs again. So we put Reby on that committee to plan the park. And so I encourage you when the weather is better, go to Bunch Park. Richard, thank you. And I know we're not done yet. There's more coming. Now, before I do anything else, Michelle, tell me, what are we gonna do next? And I also wanna leave room for pictures, but I, I know we gotta pull that string down first, so come tell us what to do, I forget. Okay, we have, uh, we have two samples of the sign that we would like for you and um, Faith to um, take the wrapping off. And then we will walk down, everyone who's able to do so, we will walk down and you will pull the covering off of the actual street sign that's been installed. And then we'll come back for pictures. Yes, and then we can come back for pictures. Okay. Oh, we have to untape this. You can just lift it up. Oh, he says we can just lift it. Yeah, please take pictures. Too much tape on mine. Mine doesn't lift. And the colors are black and gold because of those men of AFI. Okay.